So far in this program, we've seen many routine maintenance tasks you'll be performing on large heat exchangers. Condensers and big shell and tube heat exchangers are all dealt with in pretty much the same way. Now, small heat exchangers, such as this lube oil cooler, have the same kinds of maintenance problems, blockage and leakage, but you'll handle them differently. For the most part, heat exchangers used in the plant fall into two extremes. The larger ones we've examined up till now are fixed in position and maintained in place. Smaller ones, on the other hand, can be brought into the shop for their maintenance. They're portable enough for you to pick them up and handle them. What we're going to do in this part of the program is look at a typical maintenance routine on this small cooler. Specific things like where the inlets and the outlets are and the configuration of the headers may vary among different units but the things we'll be seeing are basic to most all the small shell and tube heat exchangers you'll be working on. These mechanics have already removed the lube oil cooler from the motor pump assembly it was serving. Since the system had to be put back in service immediately, they replaced it with a unit that had previously been rebuilt. They pressure checked this one to see if there were any leaks before they rebuilt it. What they'll do now is open this one, clean it out thoroughly, replace gaskets and seals, and test it. Then they'll put it back into stock until another one like it needs service. The first step is to drain the cooler thoroughly. When they've gotten as much out as possible, the front header is loosened so the seal can be broken. This way, the rest of the oil and water can be drained from the tubes in the shell. Once both fluids have been drained from the cooler, the guys can finish taking it apart without spreading the mess too much. First, he removes the front header. This is the header he had loosened to finish draining the unit. With the header off, it's pretty easy to see why they're having to work on this cooler. All that buildup comes from the cooling water flowing through the tube side. The water is unpurified river water, and the accumulation of silt and slime is a lot like some of the junk that collects in a condenser. Next, off comes the header at the other end. Notice the rotation cycle of loosening the bolts until they are free from tension on the shell and header. This is to prevent any possibility of warping the header or the shell. Once each header is removed, the hardware is set carefully aside so it doesn't get lost. The mechanic now has access to both ends of the tube bundle and both tube sheets can be scraped clean. He's doing the step of cleaning with a putty knife using care not to gouge the tubes on the tube sheet. He's not likely to cause any harm, but it is possible to do damage that might cause leaks. When the tube sheets are scraped, he wipes them clean with a rag. Now he's ready to rod out the tubes. The rod has an end which fits snugly inside the tubes, and as it's pushed through each one, drives all the accumulated sludge out of the other open end. It doesn't make any difference what direction the tubes are rotted in. Both ends are the same, and they're both open. After rotting each tube, the mechanic wipes off any remaining sludge from the tube sheets. Cleaning the gasket surfaces at each end of the shell comes next. Using a scraper, the flat surfaces have to be cleaned to bare metal. They can't leave any old gasket material stuck to the mating surfaces that would keep them from sealing tightly. Once the last little bit is removed, the shell and tube bundle can be set aside, and it's time to work on the headers. Our mechanic needs a putty knife to dig out the sludge from inside the headers. He gouges out the last little bit before he scrapes the gasket area clean. He's got to be just as thorough as when he cleaned the gasket mating surfaces on the shell. Every bit of old gasket has got to go. The surfaces have to be smooth, bare metal in order to get a good seal. He goes through the same routine to clean the other header. First, he gets all the accumulation out of the inside. Then he scrapes the gasket surfaces clean so the seal will be good when the cooler goes back together. When all this is done, he makes a final close inspection of all the parts to make sure he hasn't overlooked anything. He's also looking for any damage that might be apparent. If any were found, it would have to be corrected before he reassembles the component. 
Now it's time to lay out all the materials and hardware to put the cooler back together again. When he reassembles the cooler, he carefully checks the fit of each gasket. Then he uses a light, complete coating of gasket cement on the mating surface of the shell. This will hold the gasket in place so it will stay perfectly aligned when the header is put on. Gasket cement also helps provide a more perfect seal. So he smooths the coating on the other mating surface too. Then it's back on with the header, carefully making sure everything lines up just so. While he holds the header in place with one hand, he threads the nuts onto the studs carefully and runs them down by hand until they are finger tight. One by one, each nut is threaded onto the studs until they are all snug. When all the nuts are tightened down in this manner, he takes a hand wrench to tighten them the rest of the way. In order to make sure the header is tightened down uniformly, he tightens the nuts in a crisscross pattern. This assures that the parts will not warp and that the gaskets will provide a tight seal. Now, some heat exchangers, like this one, may require the nuts to be tightened with a torque wrench. Whenever you're working on a piece of equipment, a check of the manufacturer's manual or maintenance bulletin will tell you torquing requirements. It'll give you any other special information you need to know, too. On this particular cooler, the manufacturer doesn't specify the torque required to tighten the nuts, so the mechanic uses careful judgment to tighten the nuts uniformly. He's also careful to avoid twisting that wrench too hard. He doesn't want to take a chance on stripping the threads on the studs. After the other headers back on, when everything's up tight, a final external cleaning with a rag is just plain good practice. The last step before they put the cooler back in the storeroom for the next time it'll be needed is to check and make sure there are no leaks. And one way to do this is to hook up the tube side inlet to the usual cooling water system and then plugging the outlet. Now, when the valve is open to allow water to flow, there should be no evidence of leakage either at the gaskets or into the shell from the tube bundle. Another way of checking for leaks is a little cleaner since you don't have to use cooling water to look for leaks. All you do is plug the outlet as before, but the inlet is connected to a source of compressed air with a gauge between the valve and the cooler. The valve is opened and the shell is pressurized. You've got to be careful here not to use too much pressure or you could cause a lot of damage to the cooler. Then the valve is closed and you watch the gauge to see if there's any drop in the pressure in the shell. If not, you can figure the component is leak tight. These are the same types of tests they might have used before they took the cooler apart. After it passes the leakage test, it's ready to go back on the shelf for future use. If any leaks are found, usually it's easier to replace the tube bundle with a new or rebuilt one. Later on, the tube bundle can be rebuilt and put back for future service. From what we've seen in this unit, maintenance on shell and tube heat exchangers is pretty basic once you have an understanding of how they work and how they're made. You'll only be looking for ways to fix two heat exchanger maintenance problems, blockage and leakage. And the way you'll be dealing with these problems will depend on the physical size of the component as well as the circumstances of its use. None of it is all that difficult. But just like any mechanical job, it needs your attention to doing the job right to avoid problems later on. When you've completed the exercises on heat exchangers, you'll be ready to...